This is James Taylor, and you're listening to The Creative Life. The Creative Life podcast is a show created for you, the creative. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's a musician, writer, artist, designer, performer, educator, or creative entrepreneur. They share their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, their insights, and much, much more. In this episode of The Creative Life, I talk with Brooklyn-based guitarist and composer Dennis Del Gaudio. And in the episode, we talk about collaborating as a songwriter, the creative process for both Dennis and also for one of his idols, Keith Richards. We talk about being in the moment and his experience of playing with Billy Joel on some very, very famous shows. And finally, we talk about this idea of standing your ground, which is some really cool advice he got from Billy Joel's head of security. Uh, We also look at lots of tools and interesting books and records in this conversation with Dennis. Enjoy the episode. Hey, it's James Taylor. I'm delighted today to have our guest, Dennis Del Gaudio. And Dennis is a Brooklyn-based guitarist and composer. He was the lead guitarist in the Broadway musical Moving Out from its inception and has also played in two other huge Broadway shows, Jersey Boys and Grease. In 2008, he performed with Billy Joel on his historic final performances at Shea Stadium, which led him to joining Joel's band during his nationwide face-to-face tour with Elton John. His current project is Shotgun Wedding, and we're going to hear about that all on the on the episode in the show today. So, Dennis, welcome and lovely to speak to you today. Oh, thank you so much, James. Great to be here. So, I've said a little bit about, about you, but share with our listeners what's going on in your world just now. Well, really, the latest thing is um, I've got a country band, or I call it, you know, a city country band. It's called <laughs> the name of the, the name of the band is uh, is called Shotgun Wedding, and um, it's a New York City based. It was book, Brooklyn born, New York City based country band. Um, that is really uh, my main focus and um, and my future. And know? so, I wouldn't imagine New York and Brooklyn, in this particular, has a huge history of of country bands. But I may be completely wrong here. You know. Not really. I mean, it's uh, though currently there is a big, a rather large roots music movement in the city, and particularly in Brooklyn. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, you know, a couple of years ago, New York City was uh, was the number one urban center for people buying per capita for people buying country music in the United States. Um, you know, Nashville was number six. Wow. So there is, a, you know, and because of that, they opened, you know, now there's a, a, a modern country radio station here in New York City. Um, there's always been a country station in New York City uh, through the years. I mean, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, there was WHN. Uh, it was an AM radio station that played country music. So, you know, it's always been presence here. Uh so, you so, know, I, and I'm, I, I'm interested in on the songwriting side. Uh, so are, are you the, are you, uh, you the main songwriter in, in that group? I am one of four, actually. Um, the members, uh, the five member outfit. Um, I started the band. It was my idea. And um, but, you know, I got guys or I got people. There's, there's four guys and, and one girl and four out of five of us all we, we we write the songs we write together i love collaborating collaborating is most fun so when you think about songwriting especially as it relates to country you i often perceive um the, the a lot of the topics around more rural things uh so how does that so if you're writing with with a, a city with a like an urban sensibility and especially coming from uh from uh, brooklyn as well does that infuse in the songs how does how does that work Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's why I call it a, a city country music and we're a city country band. We we, we love classic country, um, the sound of classic country, the Merle Haggards and the George Jones and whatnot. But um, we write songs about what we know about. We, we don't want to pretend that we're from the South or from some rural area. I mean, I, I actually grew up on Long Island, you know, it's suburban. Yeah. So, you know, and I've lived in the city for a long time. It's just, let's write about what we know about. And um, there's story songs, a lot of them. So we just take it from that perspective and, and don't try to hide it. But just it's sort of a, we tip our hat and pay homage to classic country music because that's what we really love. And how did you first learn your craft as uh, as a guitarist and as a, as a songwriter? Um, I, so I picked up guitar at the age of 13. Um I self-taught for a little while. I also took lessons um, for 
uh, a number of years off and on. Um, I started writing songs, I think, within a year or two of learning how to play, you know, uh, just sort of, I think because the real, real, my main influence, the main reason why I pick up a guitar, the main reason why I still to this day play music of the Beatles, you know, I heard them and, and would watch videos of them playing on the Ed Sullivan show. and I was just mesmerized. So uh, by extension, you know, in, in addition to playing guitar, it was uh, to, you know, I got to write songs. So it, was, it happened right away, you know, um, uh, and then just, you know, took it from there. I, I still, I want to write more. I, I get on myself like, come on, man, you got to do it some more, you know. But <laughs> Some, Someone was telling me the other day about um, John Lennon and Paul McCartney that they, they were – they were they were sitting down for a little uh, for a songwriting session to get to one day, and uh, I think Paul McCartney said, "Okay, so let's write a swimming pool." Uh, um, and <laughs> something they'd had some started having some success by this point as well. So they they had a very definite purpose. So w- first of all, where, where do when it comes to songs, where do your new ideas generally come from? Uh, do they tend to come more kind of lyrically or something that you're working out on the guitar, an idea that's going around in your head, and, and how do you go about developing those those song ideas? I think the music um, the music tends to come first, uh, and it could be a riff, could be a chord progression. I, most of the time it happens when I'm playing or working on something else. Um, I can compare my process to some degree to the way, way Keith Richards says he writes songs. He'll break out like a the Everly Brothers songbook and just start playing Everly Brothers tunes, and all of a sudden he'll hear something that, you know, sparks some form of creativity, and off he goes. That's sort of the same way with me. I'm working, I'm playing other songs or playing some country tunes, whatever it is, and and I'll hear something, a chord progression that just I would have passed up uh, and, at another point in time, or a riff grabs me. Um, sometimes it's that's how it is most of the time. And then you, ha- then you sort of hunt around for an idea, a lyric idea. Um, it's happened sometimes the other way around, but, um, and occasionally it's happened where I've woken up in the morning and had a song in my head and it's been kind of fully, almost fully formed. And yeah, it, it is. It's like, I, I, where you have an idea. I think it was the night before I had an idea, you know, I wrote the song called tired of lying, which shotgun wedding will be, I'll be bringing in the shotgun wedding pretty soon. And, and it, literally I had, somebody had said, I had said that line to somebody the night before I went to, I went to sleep, woke up with it. And, you know, I opened my eyes and started singing the opening line. I mean, it was all there. I wrote the song in about, you know, in about a couple of hours, it was pretty much done. And then in terms of developing those songs, when it, when it comes to working with the band and, and de- working them up with the band, do you all come with your own song ideas and, and then that's kind of what ends up being played? Or do you kind of come in with initial ideas and then it kind of get, gets molded into a final song? Come in with initial ideas. You come in like, uh, you, you come in with definite, to whoever wrote the song in the band, you know, they come in with their ideas like me. I'll come in with my definite ideas or what I'm feeling and hearing. But again, I, I'm a collaborator. I love that art form, the art of collaborating. So, you know, and I believe a song is really its own. It's, it's almost like I didn't create it. You know, it, it was there already and I just hooked on to it. I'm like an antenna. You know yes. what I mean? So you want to let it, you know, take its own course and let other people's ideas influence and help shape the song that's most interesting to me it's funny i mean this this idea of you know we, we hear now about creative geniuses you know da vinci michelangelo all, all, all those kind of names and you know steve jobs and more recently um and i was reading the other day that that idea of creative genius being this thing that you know these ideas come from us is a relatively modern i.e it's the, from the renaissance before that in the in the greek and roman times it, they they actually felt that you were simply a vessel for for, for creative ideas, so you could uh. take all of the credit, <laughs> which was which um, that's a good and bad. But one, the, I suppose the bad part you can't take all the credit because it's coming from somewhere else, and you're just right. uh, you're just a vessel and a, a way of kind of uh, getting out there. But the the good part is it puts less stress on you as a as a creative because you realize if you're having a if you're having a uh, a bad day in t- in terms of block, it's it's not all on you. Ah, right, right, yeah, it's. You know, sometimes songwriting is definitely, it, it's a craft, it's a muscle, yeah. you have to exercise it. Two of the songs on our record, um, Andy and I 
uh, the bass player and I wrote together. And literally, we sat down with nothing. Said, all right, we're going to write a song today. What do you want to write about? And both of us said, I don't know. I mean, literally, it was, an, I, I don't know. But then, you know, in, in both instances with Andy, he had this, well, how about we write about this? You know, we, we had, we, he remembered these ideas, these things we had talked about. And um, said, hey, yeah, that, that's a great idea. The title track off of our CD was that instance where we just, he said, how about we write about this song called, you know, this idea of South, of be, you know, being South of somewhere. Oh, great. So by the end of that session, we had a, 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 the seedling of a song, you know. Um, and, and what do you do well. in terms of making sure that you're always, these ideas that maybe aren't coming to you when you're sitting down with a, w- actually writing, how do you make sure you're capturing ideas as, as they come into, come into your mind? One of the greatest invention in mo- inventions of modern man, the, the Apple iPhone and its, <laughs> and its voice recorder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have used that band. This band started, Shotgun Winning started because we, Wade and I, the piano player and I, um, got together and worked up songs and recorded them on with the recorder, Apple iPhone, and then sent them out to uh, people to listen to. And that's how we got Andy and Chuck involved. And it's, it's, it's interesting. I was, I was, we had a previous guest on um, Rolf Kent who wrote the music for Sideways and Dexter, and and mm-hmm. uh, and he was telling telling us about uh, a new app that they have, that Apple have now. They've taken it to the next level, and I think it's called the the Music Memos app that they've, oh, really? they've released, where you can whistle or sing something in, um, and it'll actually work out the chord changes for what you're whistling in or singing in. Really? Yeah, and it actually puts a little, you know, it can put a, a very basic chord, you know, playing piano or, or, or guitar thing around you whistling or singing the, that line. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely a very useful useful tool as well. So uh, t- tell us about a time, you, you, this, this career that you've had where you've worked on a project, um, you've given it your heart and your soul, you've given <coughs> it your all, but for whatever reason it just didn't work out like you'd hoped. And, and more importantly, what were the lessons that you, that you took away from that experience? Um, well, like in the case of moving out, like the, the, the London production, um, it's, uh, you know, you, what do you, what do you do? I mean, you know, you kind of, you kind of pick yourself up and, and, and move on. I mean, it's just like, uh, it, it's, it, there are power, many parallels in life. I mean, I moved around a lot as a kid. Uh, so I was, you know, quote unquote forced to make f- new friends. Um, and you either crumble um, when faced with these, these new experiences or, or adversity, or you just, you, you know, you stand up, brush yourself off and you move on. I, I, the, one of my favorite sayings is that there's a Chinese proverb that says, you know, fall seven times, stand up eight. <laughs> That's a great one. And in, in, in the case of moving out, the, the issue with that was it'd been a success on Broadway and then they mm-hmm. transferred it to, into the UK, to West End and to Europe. And it just didn't get the same level of traction. Yeah, it didn't. I mean, I had left, you know, I got the job as being the MD for, to be the musical director over there. And I just, I, um, so I got rid of my apartment here. I got rid of my car, you know, and I, I was moving to London. I was going to earn, I was earning British pounds, which still I believe is the currency in this world you want to be earning. <laughs> exactly. You know, if you can earn it, do it. And I was making great money and I was going to be out for 18 months or so. And I was just going to have fun, but bank, bank all the money I could. Um, and it didn't happen. I found myself back in New York City by, you know, uh, and, and getting up out of the subway, ha- not having anything, not having a place to live or, um, I mean, I could stay with friends, but, you know, no job um, and just going, oh, man. And, which, well, and what, what was the lesson then from that, from that you know, pretty devastating kind of experience? Yeah, I think it's you just keep on keeping on. I think you just, you know, the, the lesson is you, uh, you keep your head down and keep your legs moving. It's like you're running back in football. Just keep, you know, and think positive. Be in the moment you're in. Don't, don't, you know, if you're going to be sad about it, if you're going to be upset about it, that's fine. But don't wallow in it. Accept where you are. Look at what's good around you. You know, you're healthy. I was healthy. I was, I was pretty happy. I, I spent, you know, a couple of months in, when I, while I was searching for uh, work, just walking around New York City and checking out, you know, I love New York City. So I just walk around town and just check out the many nooks and crannies of New York City. And I, I, I had a great time and I'd walk sometimes a hundred blocks a day. Lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, what are the upsides from it? And in this, this creative journey you've had, tell us about any, 
any insights or, or aha moments, these light bulb moments where you've kind of said, okay, this is the direction I need to be going. This is a decision I need to make. And this is, this is the, this is the way that I need to kind of go next. Well, it, it, that definitely happened. That was uh, with, with the country band. I mean, I, I was working, uh, writing a lot of pop songs, songs that, um, I've always been a, a, a band guy. Um, I like playing with other musicians and, Prior to starting the country band, I was writing a lot of pop music and it was a lot of programming and, you know, not very organic in the sense I ended up, I was playing all the instruments by and large, apart from the drums. And um, I just didn't really find it satisfying. And then I had done a couple of sessions um, that were, here's a novel idea, put a bunch of musicians in a room together and then we all play at the same time. You know, and I remember sitting, listening to the playback going i want to do that because i could actually feel the i could feel all of us playing together there was there was i was breathing there was life and i said i want to do that and i want to do it with country music because i've always loved country music i said and it was just it was a real aha i just a light bulb went off and went i'm going to do this and i'm going to do it with country music <laughs> and yeah and, and I'm, I'm intrigued that you know when you're that that sense of just being part of a group, being part of so, something with, with with other people as well. Did you have that same sense when you were you were doing the the Broadway shows as well? Because it, 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 you tend to think that's a very different type of scenario. Yeah, you, you definitely felt like you were a part of a group. I mean, it was it was a variation on that theme because you weren't really you weren't creating, you know, uh, but you were you were performing together. Um, you were playing together and it was definitely a big community. That show was, was incredible in that, you know, the band was on stage with the dancers. So we were all comrades in arms, you know? So you weren't actually in the pit as such with that show. You were actually up on the stage. Yeah. We were above the stage actually on a, on a a thing called the travelator. It was a moving band, uh, bridge, if you will. So that, that must make a big difference in terms of energy on stage where you know if, if you're in the pit where you're kind of essentially covered over <laughs> in, a, mm-hmm. in, a, in a dark hole where you, you don't really see it. and i can understand what you know we had a previous guest on who talked about the benefits of that for the audience is that the stage can get further out into the audience um the downside is that you end up feeling very quite disconnected uh as a musician as well when with the other the other members that are up on stage and also the audience sure you yeah you do i mean this was we were a rock band a rock band playing on stage with you know, dancers dancing below us. And it was, we all had this sense of, we were all in it together, you know. And then how did the, how did the Billy Joel thing come about? Cause that seems a very interesting um, move into suddenly, you know, 2008 uh, performing with Billy Joel at that, those kind of historic performances at Shea stadium and then yeah. going out onto the road and doing this you know, serious nationwide touring. It was, um, it really just happened that, uh, Tommy Burns, the, uh, the guitarist in the band. Um, he's an old friend of mine. I'm friends with most of the guys in the band, but, uh, he called me up saying, listen, we're augmenting the band for this Shea stadium thing. You want to, uh, you want to join in? I was like, well, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, sure. So I came, I came on board and, and, um, for that show. And then didn't really think much of it beyond beyond that. I, I mean, I realized I was sure I was part of rock and roll history, you know, but I just thought, okay, that was it. I had my moment I, and and great. And then I got a call in uh, the following month, in August of 08, saying, um, hey, man, I'm thinking about adding you into the group. You know, uh, we're just not sure when. It was talk of the fall of that year, but it ended up being January of, of 09. I joined up with Billy, and we did about a month worth of shows just – that January um, and a bit of February, just with Billy Joel, and then the Elton John thing happened, and I toured with them for six months. Yeah. And it, it talk to me about the the difference in terms of that performance technique from going, let's say, from doing the the, the Broadway thing, even though you are up on stage, to mm-hmm. doing your your own stuff, which is maybe like smaller venues, to suddenly going and playing stadiums, which are much bigger canvases. You know, we have we have a lot of we've had actors on the show where they talk about the difference between theater, doing theater and doing TV and doing film as from a performance standpoint. So, how is it different from you up there as a guitarist? playing do you have to alter things and and if so you know what, what kind of things do you have to alter about your performance um your mo- 
I, I feel like when I my role with Billy when I was with Billy was I was the rhythm guitarist, so I I, I took a a Malcolm Young from ACDC approach. Mm-hmm. That is, you know, stand your ground, you know, hold your ground. You, your, your movement has to be generally more um, like it has to, whatever you're going to do, you ha- it has to be bigger because you're playing arenas um, and not as much, you know, stand your ground, play rhythm guitar, step up, sing some background vocals, back off. You know, if you're going to um, if you're going to get people to clap their hands, it's, you know, you you look at a section. You don't try to look at the entire arena, you know, because the other band, the rest of the band members, they have their job. You know, you go over and you get a section or or, or five sections of an arena to clap their hands. You're going to pay attention to you. It's just generally bigger movement if you're going to move. Otherwise, you just, you know, you, you hold your. I love that Malcolm. I, I love ACDC. I love their whole vibe. You know, Malcolm comes up, sings a background vocal, backs off. Yeah, <laughs> just holds his ground. Yeah, it's, I, I worked many years ago with Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones, and uh-huh. uh, there, there is one artist who does not move much <laughs> on stage. Oh yeah, he just no, gonna, he sits there and uh, you know cigarette uh, and the the the, the 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 nut of the guitar of the bass and then does uh-huh. his thing. So that's a vibe. That's a vibe though. You know, it's a you vibe. Mick, you had Mick jumping around, and you know you somebody that's like, it's like John Entwistle. Yeah, he he had to just sit there and just you know do his thing because everybody else was going crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, what what's some of the best advice that you've ever received about uh, being you know being a professional musician and uh, doing the work that you do? Well, interestingly enough, it was um, it was tied into that Billy playing with Billy Joel. It was uh, Billy's uh, performing with him. It was Billy's security head of security, Noel Noel Rush, who, who told me who gave me that advice of like, ah, oh, Dan, you know, you're moving around a bit too much, man. You know, like stand your ground you know it'll, it'll it'll look better you're doing these like weird wedding band guitarist moves i think he said <laughs> <laughs> and, um you know so that was uh that really stuck stuck with me you know um i didn't really realize it so yeah i, I think that was a big one I, I you know other things you just sort of kind of feel i, I don't know that i've really you know, I get inspired more just from watching people more than from what people have told me. The, Tommy Burns, the guitar player in in, uh, in Billy's band, he's definitely inspirational to me. He was, uh, I think, him telling me, don't settle. You know, whether it, and I took that across the board, be it playing guitar, be it, you know, just being a musician, writing songs. Don't settle. If if what you're hearing, what you're hearing out in the world and is not matching, if, if what you're creating is not matching what you're hearing in your head, mm, don't just go. Eh, okay, I, this will, this is fine. No, this keep searching. Keep searching for it till you actually get it. And with with Shotgun Wedding, you can now bringing forward this like a new project. What what are some of the things that are kind of going around your head in terms of? Um, writing the the material for the band getting getting stuff out there and actually building building a, a following now in a very very different uh environment in terms of the music industry um can you, can you sorry can you ask that question again because yeah. actually i think it cut off a little bit yeah so i'm just asking the question around with shotgun wedding this is a new a new kind of project you're working on what are some of the some of the challenges some of the things that are kind of going around in your head in terms of how to both kind of put that put a, you know a great show together around that band but also how to kind of get out there and market and promote that in a very different landscape in terms of the music industry oh it's every every way I grew up knowing the music business to work or thinking the music business worked is not there anymore. Um, so it's you, you have to, as a musician, as a writer, uh, as a performer, you have to embrace the business side of the music business. Um, the music industry, you have to, you know, it's, it's being up on our, our social media. It's social media is so important. Um, it's, uh, I mean, people get signed on the number of YouTube hits they get, you know, it's just mind boggling to me, but that's the way it is, you know, and you either embrace it or, or you, or you don't get anywhere. Um, so it's, it's, you have to wear the artistic hat and the administrative hat 
and and embrace both and do both with you know do the the admin the business side with as much love and enthusiasm as the artistic side otherwise yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna make it and it, all, it always fascinates me when I, we see, I see artists who incredibly creative uh, let's say in terms of musicians they're really creative musicians or songwriters and then they kind of park that creativity at the door when it comes to thinking about the business side of actually promoting what they do mm-hmm. um, and it just never made any it never made any sense to me to kind of not use that natural creativity that they have in actually kind of getting their message and getting their music out into the world yeah, I mean, it really is. It, he, you know what? You make you bring up a good point, James. I mean, it's cre- it's being having a business mind. There is a creativity to it as well. Uh, I had ideas for this band for Shock and Wedding as soon as I as soon as it started. You know, an idea for the logo, it, the the city country thing was was my idea. It was this whole, you know, combine the two. You know, uh, uh, what a great idea! They're, they're opposites. The best, one of the best things. One of the best ways people remember stuff is with the opposites, you know, yeah. city country. What a great idea, you know, and, and just take it from there. Yeah. How, how can you brand that? You know? yeah. All the possibilities. And, and then it's just getting it done. You know, that's the, that's where you separate the, you know, the men from the boys, as they say, you know, uh, you can't. That's where fall seven times stand up eight. <laughs> yeah comes into play and it's interesting i, I did actually a video on this recently um if you're going I'll, I'll put it on the show notes here for people that are listening if around this idea that the way that most creatives think about time is often quite different from the way that folks in business often think about time where as creatives you know we tend to, to think okay i focus on on that thing writing doing that piece of work and you 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 put in the time and you think about to get that thing completed and so time can often disappear almost because you're so yeah. into what you're doing whereas you know a lot of folks in business they measure their, their time by the 15 minute 30 minute one hour chunks um mm-hmm. which is quite a different way of thinking and often it's kind of switching between those two things can be can be challenging as well it is it, it definitely is you have to um you have to you have to be in both of those worlds you have you have to accept that that's the, the way it is and i i don't i'm i'm i have to get better at at um organizing my time uh to be in the business to wear the business hat you have to think like you just said all right for the next hour i'm gonna batch email process you know what i mean mm, yeah <laughs> and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of you know the 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 social media end of it or or uh you know the the, the website or whatever it is and then i'm gonna once that's done i'm gonna pick up the guitar and float yeah <laughs> just go where it goes so do yeah. you have any online resources or tools like evernote that you absolutely love no, I, I don't. I, what is Evernote? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a note note taking, like for, for if you're on your on your mobile phone, uh, you know, an easy way to take notes. Is there is there any um, like uh, websites or or online tools or? And we have a lot well, of musicians who love you know working with Pro Tools, and that's their that's their thing. Oh, well, I mean, uh, we all the whole our whole record was recorded with Logic. Okay. Um, it was it. Uh, I so yeah, Logic is our recording platform. I mean, I Google Docs is you know we use Google Calendar to to coordinate everybody's schedule in the band. So that's an invaluable tool when it's working. Sometimes it gets a little glitchy, but um, it generally works. Uh, this way, I don't necessarily have to. If I'm getting a gig, I just check the Google to, uh, Calendar, and um, it's and, there. and it's there, and you see where everybody's available or not, and you know if that streamlines it. Um, Logic is big. Like I said, the voice recorder app in Apple and the iPhone is, you know, is, is invaluable. Yeah. <laughs> I can't put a price tag. I would love to do a commercial for Apple just on that. I think we will. If you're listening, you know? if you're, anyone from Apple is listening just now, you've, you've, you've heard that call. <laughs> Please go and do that. And if you could recommend just one record or book to our listeners, uh, what would they be? What, what, what would the record be? And, maybe, and I'll give you the chance, you know, record and a book. So what would the record be and what would the, the book be? I'd say the the book. I, are you speaking talking like specifically like music, like uh, uh, writers and and and, and uh, it, it, that, it, that it, it, it doesn't have to be, but yeah, you know, a book. You know, a lot of our listeners here, they they're either they're they're creatives, so they're musicians, they're writers, they're um, entrepreneurs, they're photographers, they're designers. Um, what would be maybe a book and a record that you think you, they should check out? Well, I think um, the, the Craft of Lyric Writing by Sheila Davis is a great book. For anybody who wants to learn how to write lyrics, it's it's uh, 
you know, invaluable resource. I learned one of the first things she writes about in that book is that writing lyrics, lyrics and poetry, two different things. Yeah. You know, lyrics are like conversation. Um, uh, and that really blew my mind. I was like, wow, you're right. Think about it. Yesterday, love was such an easy game to play. You know, I, I just, oh yeah, that's like, just somebody would say that, you know, just cause it rhymes is, you know, almost sort of incidental, hmm. you know, um, it's very plain spoken. It's not fancied up. Um, the, uh, an album, God, an album. Okay. My favorite guitar player on the planet today is a guy named Jim Campolongo, New York city based guitar player. Any one of his records, <laughs> He is a brilliant guitarist and quirky, plays the Telecaster through a little Fender Princeton amp, twangy, jazzy, twang, surf, jazz, country, like, uh, wackiness. He's an oddball character and it comes out, but very musical. And any one of his records, I, the first one I bought is a, an album called Heaven is Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so buy, go buy that one. It's just, it's all instrumental. Um, there may be one vocal on there. He's worked with Nora Jones. Nora Jones might be singing on that, uh, on one of the songs. But uh, that record alone, that set me off. I went to the, his next performance and I said, do you have any more records? And he had them all. I said, I'll buy them all. <laughs> I did right there. And we'll, we'll put we'll put all these um, links uh, that Dennis mentioned just now on the show notes. People go to jamestaylor.me. You'll be able to just type in Dennis. Uh, you'll be able to see all the list of all these uh, these uh, albums and the, the books that we're talking about just now uh, as well. Um, imagine if you woke up tomorrow Dennis and you had to start from scratch so you've got the tools of your trade you've got your your guitar and the knowledge you've acquired over the years but you have no contacts you know no one how would you restart ah <sighs> wow that's a good question James um I would I would network social media I would get out to into clubs into uh into jams in the city that go on in New York City. I would, you know, growing up on Long Island, I would have not stayed on Long Island. I would definitely move, go to the city right away. It's cities in general, be it London or, you know, or New York or LA, you know, they're just a, a hotbed of, you know, you, you get more like-minded people and you can just shake hands, press the flesh, yeah. as they say, and just, you know, have a beer, get up, play some tunes. Um, if I'm armed with all the same tools I have right now, but none of the contacts, just get out and meet people. And, and social media is invaluable in this day and age. You didn't have it when I was a kid. Great. Well, thank you, Dan, so much for coming on the, the show. Share the best ways that listeners can connect with you, find out what, what you're up to and what projects you've got going on. Well, um, I'd say uh, Shotgun, it's, the band's website is shotgunweddingnyc.com. Um, there you can find out all sorts of stuff about us the site's growing we just had it redone so we're we're adding stuff to it um on a, a fairly regular basis also find us on facebook facebook.com you know shotgun wedding nyc um twitter is um ny city country that's our handle um those are the main those are the main resources for sure right now wonderful well dennis thank you so much for coming on the show i wish you all the best with our shotgun wedding look forward to uh to hearing uh, what happens next and uh, and the next recordings you've got coming out as well thanks for coming on the show thank you so much you're great you got a great show here james i appreciate it hey james taylor here again and if you're interested in living a more creative life then i'd love to invite you to join me as i share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.